This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Juneteenth has passed. Father's Day is over. And guess what? The struggle continues. Tonight is the locker room. The locker room is so critical in athleticism because that's where you get the strategy. How do you make a touchdown after you've been tackled? Tonight we're calling black men from all across the diaspora to peer in because we're not going to just commiserate about all the things that's wrong, but how do we make it right? I need you to do me a favor. Whatever man is in your life, I need you to get them in front of the computer tonight. Tag them, tell them, text them that tonight the strategy is going to be revealed. It took Jay-Z a couple of albums just to come up with the blueprint. Mm. Tonight we do it in just one take. I want every single one of you, I need you to get your pen and your paper. Tonight is not about emotional massages, but this is to stretch us of how it is that we provide and protect. When I'm talking about provide, I'm not talking about a ham sandwich. I'm not talking about getting an AK-47. How do we provide for the next generation? How do we protect our neighborhoods and our community? How do we declare war on gentrification? How do we make sure that our sons inherit a completely different economic universe than the ones in which we were given? Tonight in the barbershop, we're going to talk to four brothers who have carved out their own niche, their own path, their own plan, and see how it is that it resonates with all of you. I'm going to give you just one moment because uh, many of you uh, did not know that the locker room was happening on tonight. Yesterday was nothing short of astounding. So many of you have texted us, have DM'd, have called, and said it was the message that we needed in this hour and in this season. I'm excited about it, and I'm believing that God is going to touch us in unusual ways. We're going to begin in just one minute the conversation, uh, but I want, uh, before we do anything else, I want us to pray. Good and gracious God, I pray that you will not just open up heaven, but that you'll open up hearts so that we might be able to receive. As it is in heaven, Make it in earth tonight. Give us dominion. Give us authority. Give us power. And give us insight. God, anoint us to break generational curses and lead us to go down a path that so many generations were fearful to go after. We trust you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm excited about tonight. I have uh, been stirred in my spirit all day uh, because uh, I am convinced uh, that since we have been in COVID-19, you just stroll through social media every hour, somebody's having a conversation. They're talking about the issues, but not giving us a roadmap or a plan or a strategy as to how we get out of it, navigate around it, or come through it. Tonight is not like that. Uh, tonight, I'm telling you, we're going to push the envelope and not just push it. We're going to put a stamp on it. And it's going to be delivered to those of you who have an open ear, an open mind, and an open heart. So my second day, if you worship with us on yesterday, uh, on uh, yesterday, we were right here for Sunday worship at the well-groomed male uh, barbershop. I'm telling you, it is the finest barbershop I've ever been in in my life. My mother called me and said, Lord, what kind of barbershop is that? So that's how they're doing it in the ATL. Um, the proprietor uh, is uh, here, Brother Troy uh, King, transplant from Chicago, uh, and he is not doing the last dance. He's just getting started. I'm grateful for it. Brother Troy King, yes, I can't forget that name in, in Atlanta. I always wanted to meet Dr. King, and now I'm in his barbershop. Well, you in, you in a King barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want you to uh, really uh, uh, talk about uh, the practicality of business. Uh, so many of us uh, miss um, that the greatest wealth is not even done through witty ideas or ingenuity. It's maximizing a need. Uh, I, I read a couple of years ago 
of Rodney. Nobody ever asks, where is the millionaire that produces buttons? <laughs> where is the billionaire uh, that is producing YKK zippers? Uh, but they're making money hand over fist and nobody realizes it. The barbershop has always been a bedrock uh, for black men and what it is that you have done in this shop uh, has modeled the spirit of excellence. The barbershops I grew up in had old jet magazines uh, and if you went to the bottom of the stack, the old men would tell you, get away from that. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't for you. I, I, I want you to talk about uh, how you got to this place, not being an Atlanta native, uh, and really you and your wife uh, doing something that was meeting a need in this community. Well, well thank you for giving me an opportunity to, to speak on what we've created. So my wife Pamela and I, uh, about five years ago, we were looking to create something and we were trying to decide what exactly uh, we wanted to do. And you don't have to, to, to create a new widget. Yes. You know, there are things that we know that people need every day. Yes. And so uh, one of my family, my grandfather uh, owned a barbershop. Wow. And uh, I had uh, been in business for 30 years and I thought I could do a better barbershop. I can do a barbershop that people in the community would appreciate. Yes. That I could get high quality barbers to provide um, great service and then we could do it in our community. Uh, so five years ago, we uh, got an architect and a designer, and we found a space, and we gutted it, and we said, what do we want to create? And uh, five years later, uh, I think what we've created is the kind of place that everybody's comfortable in. Yeah. Uh, families feel good about coming. Kid, we have kids. We have, we have women. We have professionals. We have everyday people just... I want you to say a word uh, for somebody who now uh, may have uh, excess capital. Uh, they're not a barber. Uh, it is not in their lineage. Uh, but I, I want you to talk about why this is a, a profitable venture uh, in something that uh, entrepreneurs, both male and female, may be able to investigate. So one of the, the primary reasons we went into this business is that the barbershop is the most successful business model that exists in our community. Wow. Because the amount of, the, the money that is dedicated to, help, to hair care is a substantial proportion of what people budget. So uh, whether the times are good or times are bad, there's a, pretend, the, a percentage of, of their income that's budgeted toward hair care. And so for that reason, uh, it's, it's been a solid business for us. Um, and I'll go even further to say, you know, like everybody else, we were affected by the COVID-19 shutdown. Right. And my wife and I had conversations about, you know, what is our long-term future going to be? Uh, but we thought the fundamentals of hair care yes. continue to be strong. Uh, and as it continues to be strong, we expect it there, there to be an opportunity to grow in the future. Things may be slow for a while. We are, you know, the customers are a little bit more apprehensive than they've been in the past. Yes. We have to do the things that make them comfortable, that their uh, uh, health and well-being are, are, are important to us. But in the long run, we feel that uh, the customers are going to come back and that there's going to be opportunity to grow. Yeah. Outside of um, what we've witnessed over the last, I'm going to say, three weeks uh, since the uprising with George Floyd, uh, the largest national uprising uh, that America has seen of black rage and disillusionment was 1968 uh, after the uh, murder of Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, it was a, a radio personality that stayed on the air uh, to speak calm and to speak peace uh, and to speak unity both in Detroit uh, and Los Angeles. I was uh, riding today and uh, turned the radio on and heard uh, this brother saying, I hear you all marching. I know you're upset. I know you got a right to be bothered. But are y'all Negroes registered to vote? Because <laughs> if y'all ain't registered to vote, uh, all of this is just sound and fury. Uh, and uh, I'm glad 
uh, outside of uh, his regular on-air personality hours that uh, Katie Bo, who is a much celebrated uh, and revered uh, personality, not just here in Atlanta, uh, but really uh, around the uh, nation for gospel music. I, I want you to uh, talk about the responsibility, uh, if I can, of uh, celebrities and people who have a, a uh, influencers is the word I want to use, influencers, to really talk about economic development uh, because I don't hear it. Uh, I hear don't break into Macy's. Right. Uh, but nobody's just saying, let's build our own. Right. Uh, I hear don't burn down uh, the steak center. But nobody is saying, instead of that, everybody go to a black-owned restaurant. Right, right. Uh, and so I want you to talk about, uh, especially coming out of Juneteenth, uh, in the backdrop of uh, the president uh, going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, the very first time America bombed itself uh, was to disrupt mm. Uh, our own African American ecosystem. So right. I, I want you to talk about uh, influences and the responsibility on this area of economic development. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. And yeah. I believe that, yeah, influencers, celebrities, they need to step up and take full advantage because they've got the platform that many quote unquote regular people don't have. They should step up and they should make it clear that not only should we you know, if, if you're going, if I'm going to, if you have allowed me to be in this position, then it is my position, it is my responsibility to make sure that I do my best to help the culture. Yes. I'm gonna go just a little bit beyond that, okay? I think far and so many times, there's only one you, there's only one me. Flashy, you're, you're gregarious, great personality, the whole nine. People are going to flock to you, but every but you can't touch everybody, even right. on the microphone, even this. We got probably millions of people watching. All right. What I believe that we should do, and that's what we do with Man Up Community, and that is we uncover the hero of the average guy. Wow. So for so long, we have celebrities that we put in these positions to do it all. And it's not as many celebrities as it is the average guy the regular guy. Right. So it's speaking to that regular guy and letting him know, say, bruh, you really are a hero. We just got to uncover it. We got to pull all of the filters that you've had that have stopped you from really being the best you. Get that stuff out of the way. A lot of it is father wounds, mother wounds, all of that hurts, pains. Move that out of the way. And man up is this, M-A-N-U-P. It's maturity, accept responsibility, never settle, Unity and productivity. Wow. We got a curriculum for that. It's called Man Up Certified. But once a man becomes aware of who he is and is surrounded by other brothers who will champion him, bash free, guilt free, all right, he becomes what we call a force of unstoppable productivity. That's in business, that's in family, that's in your community. You can't stop a man, a black man, once he is determined that I will not quit. So that's, that, that piece that you have, when I see you talk, yeah. that piece that Dr. King has, not this Dr. King, uh, <laughs> but he probably got it too. You know, that piece of it, yes. that piece of it right there is what every man possesses. It just gotta be fertilized, Jamal. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta be fertilized. And so when we talk about that, we talk about speaking to that guy and saying, hey, just because you're not doing it does not mean you can't do it. Wow. Just because you've never seen it does not mean it doesn't exist. It's right there in your face beside every problem. And I get loud when I get passionate. Beside every problem, there is a possibility. Beside every problem, there's a possibility. So if you see the problem, but you can't see the possibility, that's a filter. So what we do is we help you remove that filter. We bring in people like a king. We bring in uh, different people to come in and say, hey, that thing that you've been plan with that's not a toy mm. that's a gift wow let me help you fertilize it and every man has some weeds in his garden so what you do is you weed treat the bad stuff and all of us got some bad stuff i got some righteous in me and i got some ratchet in me and bountiful supplies you weed treat the good stuff the bad stuff and you fertilize the good so conversations like this allow us to let the, the parts of us that we don't even know that's, that's in their infancy state <clears throat> to rise up and be great. 
I love it. About uh, 15 years ago, uh, I was uh, actually here in Atlanta, and uh, Bishop Jakes was having a conference, and uh, we went to a dinner at a table, about 10, 12 uh, young preachers. I was a young preacher then, 10 to 12 uh, young preachers. And uh, my next guest uh, was talking to us about a uh, million-dollar strategy, how to invest, how to live beyond the church, beyond the pulpit. All preachers, all seminary trained, all up and coming, and none of us would listen to them. So we were so glad to preach that we didn't think about what was life outside of that. I'm, uh, it took me 20 years, but I'm listening to every word Rodney Sampson got to say. Uh, this morning he was uh, on the front page of Atlanta Journal-Constitution uh, because uh, he really has a passion of making sure our HBCUs survive uh, this uh, COVID-19 and all the more. Uh, its graduates are able to thrive and not just to exist, uh, but to make an impact. Uh, so I want to uh, yield to the man who had I listened to years ago, uh, I'd be in a much better place in my <laughs> life right now. Rodney, it's in your hands, sir. Uh, Jay, it's good to be here. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in the tech world, we talk about early adopters, and you were one of the early adopters of streaming technology. When the history books are written, they have to record uh, that this young preacher at Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, Maryland, took a call and basically said, I'm in on the phone. Right. And I think that uh, that's the signal uh, to black men right now is to basically stand up and say, I'm in. Um, for the first time, um, and you alluded to this, in modern day um, antiquity, uh, we've seen white people for the first time feel invisible, invinc un not invinc they're, they're felt um, not invincible to a enemy that they can't see, COVID-19. Mm. It's the first time that they felt empathy because usually racism is something you can't touch, right? It's subjective. Um, when I write the pen and I say that um, I'm, I'm uh, not going to give you the scholarship or not going to give you the loan or not going to give you the investment capital, it's always a reason why that you can't pin down. And so the fact that you can juxtapose um, a man putting his neck on the knee, uh, uh, his knee on the neck of a black man for eight minutes, at the same time that the world feels vulnerable for the first time, has opened up a window of opportunity that I believe we'll never see again, at least in my lifetime. Mm. And so with, 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 with context there, I've been spending the last three weeks talking to what we call white allies in the tech world. Mm. Um, and the reason I've been focused on that for the last 20 years, but 10 years in specific, is 60% of all the net new jobs of the future are in tech and they're in startups. So if 60% of the jobs are over here, but we're still chasing you know, other opportunities, we've got to get aligned. Not just the jobs, but the entrepreneurship opportunities and the investment opportunities. Wow. And so on Juneteenth, we leveraged Juneteenth that this was not going to be a day where tech companies and major brands would use it as a performative uh, signal that black lives matter but when they're black employees, black suppliers, and ownership tables that have only a few black people on them spoke up and said, no, if black lives matter, you would hire me. If black lives matter, you buy from my company. If black lives matter, you invest. And so on Juneteenth 4.0 um, last week, we, um, we brought some solutions to the black community. And uh, I can give them out now, or I can wait till we all introduce, but I want to give that context. I'm going to come back to you. Absolutely. Uh, th this uh, weekend, uh, there was uh, a trending hashtag called Black Receipts. Uh, don't just talk about you supporting black business, show it. Uh, and online, uh, we had uh, evidence of some $700,000 in just three days spent just in black businesses. Uh, my next uh, guest is uh, Dr. Anderson, who has been banging the drum, putting a smoke signal out, uh, jumping on top of Kilimanjaro long before COVID-19 and long before 
uh, Juneteenth uh, became Vogue popular uh, in trending. And I, I, I want to uh, shift the narrative, Rodney, just a little bit um, because uh, this is the most integrated demonstrations I've ever seen in my life in person or in footage. And what I want to talk about is uh, what is white corporate responsibility and partnership. Uh, after apartheid fell apart, uh, South Africa uh, had uh, for six months to a year the truth and reconciliation. Uh, that we're no longer not just changing the law, we got to change the culture. And so Dr. Anderson, I want you to talk about changing the culture, culture of business, how it is that we move forward. The church will never be the same uh, 14 weeks outside the sanctuary. This morning, I had a doctor's appointment and uh, I saw the doctor two months ago, but it was through FaceTime. Uh, so he said, come let me see you. Yeah, <laughs> so I want you to talk about how is black business and black dollars different post COVID-19? Even be a part of it, I'm very appreciative. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I wanna answer your question, but I also wanna just take a minute to just focus everybody. I know everybody's talking about black lives matter, but I think it's more important that black economics matters. Um, we, can't, we can't live if we don't have the money to, to be able to live. So I think we need to focus on that. But to your point, <clears throat> I got a call um, 96 hours ago from um, my business partner, Sam, in New York. We have um, our offices at 30 Wall Street in New York, the real estate group partners. Sam said, David, um, you know, the market is what they call rebounding. It would appear that it's rebounding. It, went, it dropped 10,000 points, and we actually called this at New Birth a year ago yep. to the date. Yep. That's on the YouTube. But he said, listen, the market is rebounding, and there's it's, it's fear in the marketplace. People uh, want to pull their money out of the market and redirect funds. So, so what we're talking about is not the stock market. We're talking about the alternative market. And then the question becomes, well, what are the alternative markets? We got real estate, you have uh, private equity, you have um, notes and, and precious metals and, and other kind of tangible investments. Sam said, I got $100 million that I need to place right now. Do you have an opportunity zone funding status that we can put this money in so y'all can go do the real estate tax lien certificates specifically in Atlanta for affordable housing. This is the phone call that came in 96 hours ago. Wow. So I'm like, yo, this is nuts because everybody is like trying to get a PPP loan. Cats is going to Bank of America. Right. They doing all of it. They going to the bank. They going to this and that. They got susus. I seen some cats online talking about they got a, a African susu that they creating with an MLM component to it. <laughs> like, come on, like you're gonna you're gonna bastardize something that right. was created by us by Africans to be able to advantage us and now you're putting the MLM component on it. People are doing all kind of crazy things when simply all we need to do is right now while white folks are feeling guilty, it ain't about what can we do, it's about reparations. Mm. So now that you got this guilt going on, you feel like you wanna do something, you wanna give, why don't you put this money, this economics, this manna into this LLC? More specifically, into the opportunity zone. The, the question was, and we talked about this, a year ago at New Birth. Yeah. And the question is, what can we do? How can we buy black the block? Mm. We can all create an opportunity zone. We can do that tonight. It's $100 to file on the Secretary of State. And white folks can redirect funds that they got on the market that they're getting ready to lose. They got to take the money outside of the market. It can't be tied to the index or the LIBOR. So where are they going to place it? They got to place it in alternative funds. And if you're in front and you're ready and you understand the importance of land, the Bible commands us, it's a mandate, possess the land and to further subdue it. Right. So we all got to own, you can't be a black man in America and not own land. Wow. The Jews, when the kids turn 13 or sometimes 16 in Jewish benevolent law, they call it a bar mitzvah. They give these kids land and gold. Black people don't do that. We don't, we don't give our kids some kind of acknowledgement when it comes time for manhood. So the, the, the best thing that we can do, in my opinion, my humble opinion, respectfully, is, is land ownership, period. And, and now's the time. White folks is, uh, is, is, is feeling guilty. Let's redirect some of them funds in the LLCs, and LLCs need to be out here aggressively buying real estate. There was a bottleneck, no sales 
since April. No sales in May, no sale in June. There's a slight sale in July. But August 1st, that bottleneck has to come to the courthouse steps. And if we're not liquid, we can't participate on that. So we can get liquid now by leveraging this guilt to come into these LLCs and go for it. For any of all brothers have been in the barbershop, and let me just say this, in the barbershop, there is no moderator. <laughs> in the barbershop, there is no MC. Uh, and so I am relinquishing uh, my pastoral privilege in the golden microphone to have an authentic barbershop conversation. So what I want to do, uh, gentlemen, just with the five of us, uh, is to really just have a discussion. Y'all are already in the barbershop chairs. Uh, so I, I want us to have a real conversation on the points uh, that everybody has lifted. Uh, and let's, even if we over talk each other, that's the authentic barbershop experience, <laughs> Brother King. So once we come out of the barbershop, I don't want us to be in the fellowship hall of the church. I want us to be in the barbershop. So I, I want us to really unpack uh, the principles and the points and the keys uh, that we have said, what it is that we buy into, let's go with it and seek it out what we don't understand there are no dummies in the barbershop we right. we all right. learning it right here uh so katie go ahead. i got i gotta jump in this because three of the hardest words to say bro is i don't know mm. the hardest words to say and for so many people they don't confess vulnerability of i don't know because there ain't no rewards for i don't know wow but when you said opportunity <laughs> zone i mean some of the stuff I kind of have a vague understanding of some of the indexes you talk about and what have you, but some, for, for some people that's watching, and then some things you said, even for me, it sounded like blah, 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 blah. It sounded good. You were passionate. Pounded the fist. So let's talk about, in. Let's, know, talk like, about let like, let's talk about what the opportunity zone is, right? Yeah. Because that's really the question. So, so Donald Trump, and I'm not pro-Trump, I'm just talking about what he did. Donald Trump and the, and the tax, uh, they, they, up, they changed the tax code for the tax bill gave tax incentives. And we, and we talked about this yeah. on, on YouTube at your place. And so in essence, what they're doing is dollars that um, hedge funds or whomever that want to invest, if those dollars are placed into specific zip codes, like we're in Decatur, so 30332, 30334, all of those zips, those are areas that are earmarked by the government that are in need of funds. And so in essence, they call opportunity zones, right? And so Dollar for dollar, for every dollar that you put into those zip codes to buy houses that need to be gentrified or houses that are abandoned or whatever, bandos, what they call them in the street, mm. you get a tax credit for 10 years. So if you're familiar with, if you got a retirement, you got a Roth IRA, yes. this is like the super Roth IRA, right? Meaning that I could put my, instead of being limited to my contributions that I make, a Roth contribution is like six Gs, right? If, and if you're of age, it's seven grand. They lifted the limits in certain areas. With this, you could put $10 million, $100 million, whatever the um, amount is, because it's unlimited. So it's like a super Roth IRA. And you can use it to, to, to really rehabilitate your neighborhood. So what, I, what I'm saying is that all this conversation that we be having at the barbershop about buying black the block, right? The, the white man, Trump already created it for us. We not utilizing it because right. we worrying about what Cardi B talking about. Right. Right. Just for you go do on. that, and I'm going to give right to you. Yeah. I got people watching in Topeka, Kansas, in Fort Worth, Texas, in Cleveland, Ohio. How do I find out where the opportunity zones are I mean, in my the, area? Like we got Google, right? So, like, they used to, like, kill us. My mom said they used to cut our hands off for reading books. Now you got Alexa, you got Google. Crazy. You could be like, yo, Google, what's up with the opportunity zones? And all of this information, they got an opportunity zone map. Jamal, wow. where you can figure out exactly is my house in the opportunity zone. And furthermore, there's a form that you can fill out on the IRS. I think it's like form 6698, where you can get an opportunity zone designation, which means that you can get the tax benefit. You understand what I'm saying? So like all of this stuff, I mean, it sounds new to some people, but this is the language of entrepreneurialism. Like yeah. you can't really get out here and do what you're trying to <laughs> do if right you don't here. speak the money lease. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I'm ahead, sorry. Rodney. So uh, I just want to go a little deeper. To be honest with you, um, so Donald Trump's administration passed OZs, Opportunity Zones. 
um, uh, actually a Jewish friend of mine, he's actually on my board of advisors named Steve Glickman. Steve Glickman wrote the policy so for opportunity know. zones in the Obama administration. Wow. But it got buried. Sean Parker, who um, was one of the original investors in Facebook from Napster, Basically, Sean has a think tank. Sean funded the thought process for the, the OZ. policy for OZ. Wow. Tim Scott sponsored it, right, and made it a, 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 a program of this administration. Here's the challenge. Um, the money for you to get the tax benefit has to be from capital gains. And so what capital gains are, meaning if you sell this business, King, um, and you make profits, you're going to pay capital gains right. on it. Mm. Or if I invest in Coinbase, mm. I'm talking to the average guy, if I put $300 in Coinbase and my Bitcoin goes up at the end of the year and I made $200, I have technically made capital, capital gains, gains. Gotcha. on that money. So the, the people who are investing in OZs um, to get the tax benefit have to have had capital gains to your point. If they're pulling $100 million out of the market, that means they're going to have capital gains on the profits of that market. And I'm setting up two of them now. I'm setting up yeah. one in Kansas City. And OHUP operates um, on the campus of Morehouse College, which is interesting. They didn't put the main AUC in an opportunity zone. It got very, very p political with uh -huh. governors. They didn't put Congressman Hank Johnson's district in an opportunity zone. Right, that's where I am. Right, <laughs> and it's not in an OZ. They put across the street where the development is happening towards the West End, they did put some of that in an opportunity zone. So theoretically, you could set up an LLC for $100, but to give the tax benefit to an investor, that investor has to have what is called capital gains. So what you're talking about, we hired CPAs to come into the office to design tax mitigation structures to be able to make it advantageous to be able to raise this kind of capital. Because what we're talking about is basically creating $100, creating the OZ, and then raising capital. What I'm, what I'm suggesting, what I'm, what I'm doing, and what I'm also suggesting to the platform is that right now, while it's at top of mind, monies can be raised. Like, we don't, I've, I've been out here for 20 years. I've never gotten a call to just, I've gotten calls for big money, but not like that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that's a tax mitigation issue that the, we pay the CPAs to figure that out. We're offering, um, you know, the capital gains that will be made over the next 10 years. That's advantageous for anybody that's trying to move capital right now because they got to get it off the market. If it stays on the market, they're going to lose it. The market just went yeah. down 27, like went down 10,000 points and then rebounded. Everybody knows that's being propped up. So there's money that's being moved right now because it's got to be moved. You could put it yeah. in the OZ and tell them yeah. over the next 10 years when capital gains yeah. are made, then this is the safe yeah. haven for them to take advantage of that, yeah. bring in a team of CPAs, let them figure that out. But what I'm saying is now while this is happening, we need to raise these funds without going to the PPP, without going to the bank and asking for debt. We need to raise equity, specifically earmarked, to buy our communities back. There's no reason why in Baltimore, they called, they said when all of that was going on with Freddie Gray, um, Hashim and Zinger from the New Black Panther Party yeah. called. He was like, yo, brother Dave, we want you to come up here and say something. And I declined because my position was at the time, and I'm not from Baltimore, but my position was this only happened because didn't nobody own nothing in Baltimore. Right. Wow. Right. Because when you own right. land, right. you pay property taxes, and you pay those property taxes go to law enforcement, and it goes to education. Right. So none of them people in the area had any relationships with law enforcement. None of them people in the area went to MPU meetings because they didn't own land. So Freddie Gray died, not because it, it had to do with police brutality, but it also, there was blood on the hands of those people that lived in that area because they didn't own nothing. So you can't just yeah. come, come and tell me that you're going to go and take a dude and give him a hard ride and break his dag on vertebrae. Right. And y'all let that go down? Didn't nobody own nothing? Mm. I got KD pulling on yeah. pulling on my suit jacket because he dropped something in the opening conversation because what you all are talking about is we got to pay to the Squire average Healy man. Had we, a PhD. We, yeah. So I want to know the average black man who got a stimulus check for right. 1200. Right. All right. What do I do with this 1200? No, you go to the tax sale, man. Like like seriously, like we like I got a closing tomorrow, man, on a house that we spend like $1,500 on. 
And it's, it's like, I got a HUD, man. Like, the HUD is in my pocket. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's sold for over 100 grand. So there's, there's already opportunities available. We're not reading. We're not reading to take advantage of these opportunities. Like, the barbershop, when you're talking about black wealth, you got you to gotta talk about A.G. Gaston. This dude started, the person who put the money up when King got arrested, yeah. A.G. Gaston, yeah. he started in barbershops. Atlanta uh, Life, Alonzo Herndon, started in barbershops. S.B. Fuller started in barbershops. Like I can go on and on about the history of the barbershop and the importance of it in black culture. But when you're there for that 45 minutes or 30 minutes, ain't nobody, they talking about the game. They talking about who this chick that just came in here. Ain't nobody talking about OZs? Like, come on. Like, so this, like, it's, it's, a, it's a part of a, a part of this, KD, is on us to be able to enhance the conversation to where shouldn't nobody be in a barbershop and not talking about a retirement plan. But do you have the patience, though? Because you're here. You're clearly here. Yeah, but I'm here, too. Really? Yo, KD, come on, son. <laughs> no, this is not. No, no, hear me. Hear me. No, this is not. Hear me. I promise you. No, this I, I, is not. I, 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 I want to like tra that. Let me translate. Okay. So, like... We're going to talk immediately after this because if he got $100 million, right. I'm already in position. Because here's the thing. The people with $100 million aren't stupid investors. They're smart money and it's dumb money, right? right? Technically. Just because you set up an LLC does not mean I'm going to invest because I can get a, a capital gain. You still got to have a viable business model. Yeah, I mean, we and you still, like you still got to... And even if you don't have a track record, you build a team around you that has one, but you got to have something to sell. No one's just going to put money in your LLC sure. just because they're trying to move money. They'll, they'll, they'll take the capital gain on them, the, the capital gains loss on the money before they put it in an entrepreneur. Like if this brother right here said, you know what? I'm going to Google right now if this is the opportunity zone. So OZ is for people really who are in business, to be honest with you. And what, because what investors, do we do, Rodney, for Brother Troy, if New York Times says on Wednesday, last Wednesday yeah. that 40% of black businesses are going to fold when this is right. off? Because right. they so, didn't so get what the I'm tell you, so what do they do? So to I want forward? you to look up Squire, S-Q-U-I-R-E. These two black brothers, I invested in two venture funds, one Marlon Nichols, one called Tech Square Labs. Last week, they announced $34 million in Series A venture capital. These are two black people for their business called Squire. Their job is to help tech, help barbershops become technology enabled wow. so that they can, they can survive beyond the crisis. Because here's the reality, you said mm -hmm. this, when the PPP is out, when all the grants are gone, it takes 90 days to develop a new habit. That's right. Right? There's no guarantee that after 90 days, people will want to come sit in a physical edifice when I can get all of my spirituality yep. from you on all these devices. Yep. I have developed a new habit. <laughs> That's right. Right? That's right. That's so right. my <laughs> revenue stream has to match with my new habit. Right. So you might have to become the Uber for barbershops. Wow. Right, you might have to do training in here mm. and deploy barbers to houses that socially distance appropriately, so they're cutting, but you track it all through the Squire app, right? So yeah. I know you've been thinking about how do I productize or technology yeah. enable my business to align with folks' habits that have changed. Robert Smith it. said this in the New York That's Times right. over the weekend. The we need partners. to focus on digitizing one million black owned businesses. Wow. What does it mean to digitize wow. your business? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a website and you're not selling on every social media platform, if you're not looking at the analytics of your customers, if you can't take money on here, right. like when you first got the new birth, I saw you set up a cash app. Uh, it took you did. 30 so, seconds. So, so, <laughs> then, then brother did it the next week. Your account was like, Jay, what you doing? You, you done got $39,000 on a Sunday morning and a cash app, right? So, so, but can, to be so nimble. Can, so, so, can, so, so can I just, so, so I'm excited about the investment opportunities. Uh, but investment opportunities for me are when you have cash and you're looking to do something with it. You're going to buy something, you get an LLC. I want to take a step back for a second. This, this is a barbershop. Barbershops are hands-on. I don't know how you're going to do it. So l let me just say this. My wife and I have an online store. We have Wi-Fi. We have, we're, we're, we're uh, moving to developing our own marketing uh, product line, doing it online, doing it in-house. We're, we're looking at those things. We're also looking at expanding. Yeah. That involves investment. We're looking at the opportunities. 
assuming that some people are going to fail, there's going to be some spaces we can fill the, fill the, the void. Right. But having said that, barbershops are a hands-on experience. And I've talked with my manager, and I've talked with my wife about this. Um, you can only get your hair cut if somebody cuts it. You can't do that online. It's got to be physical, and it's going to be probably in a location, because this location can be protected. I can, I can show people my protocols of how I steril, use sterility and sanitation and how I'm going to protect their health. But moving forward, but move, moving forward I'd, like to, I'd like to have a chain of these, right? I'd like to have a proven model that's successful and I can <clears throat> either franchise it or move it to, to other people. And I will back up one other step. Uh, before COVID-19, all my chairs were filled. I had 10 barbers. They were all successful. I encouraged each one of them to not be an employee of mine for the long term. I said, your goal is to be your own barber and own, own, owner of your own shop because it's the most stable business model, not necessarily high earning, but stable. You can own your own shop. You can have a four chair shop, five chair shop. You can earn yours, get rent or, or commission from somebody else and create a stable, viable business you don't have to have a great education to do it. You just have to be skilled in care. He was. He said that you, everybody got get, get to get their hair cut. Right. So if you're creating a model that is like this, if people don't come here, if everybody get their hair cut, then maybe the model should be they don't come here, you go to them is what well, he was I'm suggest- going to take it a step well, further. Well, How well, do you pandemic-proof your business? That's what I'm saying, because it's listed non-essential. Right. So we're in phase gotta, one of the surge, right? They're saying we're just in phase one, phase and thanks to, to re, re, you know, re, re, Republican cap- capitalism right. at the expense of black lives, mm. right? right? They said, let's open back up. Right. You marry that with the protest, we're yeah. in the experimental stage. Yeah, that's, right. that's to be honest with you, we're all in the experimental that's stage crazy. right now, taking a risk that we don't have enough data on. What if we go into phase two and we have to go back and shelter in place? i give you an example. I've been married 22 years. I have not had a haircut in 22 years. You know why? Because my wife learned how to cut my hair. Where's your YouTube video behind the paywall for wives, A, to learn how to take care of their husbands Mm. or vice versa, and where's the products that they get on shipment so that I can just get my beer oil shipped to me and I can get my... that's, That's coming. Right. So my thing is your expansion in a pandemic may not be the original vision of success that God enabled you to get into the, po- the position to now experiment on something that you can't fathom yet. Well, don't, let it, don't let it anesthetize you, meaning well, this is like real, this right here, when you walk in here and you see that you built this, don't let this become a shrine to you mm, in a pandemic mm, where you could use the brand that you built and I hope you've been getting the database of every customer. That's why you need technology. If you've had 3,000 people that have gotten their hair cut, you should have their email numbers and cell phones right now because your wealth is in the data. I have the analytics. I have the, okay. I have the data. And I also ran, well, we won't get into that. No, no, no. But, yeah, just, but, yeah. So, so, I know so, you so, want to go so, back, though. I know you, no, no, I know no, you, no. yeah. So, so what you're bringing in actually is a, a, a bit of risk. Nobody knows how this is going to turn out. My, my wife and I were sitting at the kitchen table a couple months ago, sitting there like, mm-hmm. what are we going to do? Business was shut. No revenues coming in. Customers aren't going to come back. What are we going to do? Our, our decision was, because we've got a lot of feedback of people that wanted to come back, I would say that you're the outlier in terms of your haircuts. Most people... Yes. Most yeah, people, I know I am. Most yeah. people... Most people it's a thing that they look forward on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis to, to, to get groomed up, well-groomed male, to look, <laughs> to, to, to feel better about themselves. Yes. Get away from the wife. Go and, ahead and say and, it. I'm going to say it. I'm and say it. and, yeah, and, and I will tell you that as my wife and I were sitting around the table, my phone would ring and my barbers would call or customers would call and they're like, when are you going to open up? There were people that were like, yeah, I know it's dangerous, but we want to come back. My wife said, we, we, we stayed closed two weeks after the extension because we wanted to see. We're, we are not, my wife and I are very, really careful. Um, we looked at all the, all the data, we looked at the, at, at the protocols, 
And my, my, my background before I got into this was in medical sales. Uh, so I spent a lot of time in hospitals and I talked to professionals and I talked to, to experts in, in, in virology. And they told me what's going on. They, they feed me the information. And so when you come in this shop, we have the shop cut, you know, clean once a week. We have all the counters. We, do, we turn over every customer. We wear a mask. We have sanitizer. We have everybody wash their hands. We, have, we, do, we do temperature checks. We do questionnaires. We do all the things that, that you would do to go into a hospital. Now, are there any guarantees? Absolutely not. But one of the things that we committed to was, we, we, not to be a shrine, but we committed to the community. We have a successful business, or had a really successful business, strong customer relationship, good, good barbers, uh, with growth. My wife and I basically are said, we believe in this business. We think it can continue, but we don't know. So, to your so, point, I, so I need to look at some other opportunities your, in addition to that. To your point, which is what... Uh, Mr. Sams is talking about when Trump's going to get reelected. I know y'all don't want to hear that, right? Sure. I, 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 no, I do not want to hear that. Hear me out, hear me out. What's going to happen is... The thoughts gonna, of our guests do not reflect that gonna the We're going to have to shelter in place again, right? <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Yeah. They're already saying there's right. going to be another wave of this COVID, and it's going to be longer, and it's going to be stronger. They're yeah, they already playing currency wars, and the Chinese already sent this to us. We in World War III right now. They just ain't telling you this. So we have to go into our history books and look at what did Alonzo Herndon do because they had a similar type of situation. How did his business survive? While he was cutting hair, train the train the baby. he was selling insurance policies. This is how the burial insurance game started. They was cutting hair. Hey, brother, how you doing? You seen the game? Okay, what's up with this burial insurance? You got this burial insurance? Cool. That's an essential business, right? So not only was he getting the $20 or whatever for the cut, but he was selling insurance policies. Maybe that's something that you're going to have to incorporate with what you got going on because they're getting ready to have another whole situation with stay in place. And it's going to be longer. They're talking about the next stay in place going to be six months. So this is what this is the chatter on the financial markets. So we can't just be like, oh, well, I love the business. And I think what you're doing is incredible, man. Like, I think what you even working with your wife is like incredible. You know what I'm saying? Like most cats can't do that. So you just got to look at what are the essential businesses that are happening right now that you can incorporate into that. Alonzo Herndon also parlayed the insurance game into real estate. They own the number one real estate investment brokerage firm in Atlanta. First black millionaire recorded history in Georgia. So maybe those essential businesses have to be incorporated to what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and use this as the base to, to get things out. But to your point, KD, before we get out of here, what you're asking me, because we came out the box on an extremely high level, all right? And, and that doesn't work for everybody. That's like, I'm just was kind of sharing with Jamal like what happened since the last time we had yeah. gotten together and this, this call just came in the past 96 hours. The, 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 the regular deals are done um, inch by inch, deal by deal. And so the regular person that's trying to get a loan right now, I would admonish them to look into, and there's a book online called The um, Self-Directed IRA Handbook, written by a gentleman named um, uh, so, so, uh, Matt Sorensen, all right? Matt Sorensen talks about the ability to use self-directed IRAs to be able to raise capital. So for instance, if Brother Samson has 100 Gs, you was talking about money cash laying around, instead of using the banks, using debt financing, I could go to the brother and say, hey brother, I need 100 grand, can you roll those funds out of your retirement? You already got challenges on the market, you know you can't do 27% this year, right. I'm going to guarantee your principal because I'm a, what they call hypothecate. So in the street, that'll be like, I'm going to secure your dough, right? So we're going to take your money <laughs> and we're going to put it in the ground, okay? We're going to yeah. secure it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to give you 10%. That's what it's called. It's called hypothecation. That's what yeah. white boys call yeah. it on the market. In the street, we're going to secure it, right? We're going to secure that dough and I'm going to give you 10% of yeah. your money. And I don't pay capital gains on any... And, and yeah. the money goes back into his IRA. Yeah. Like, this is, a, this is how deals get done. So do you have a system in place where, okay, so I feel like your mentor don't need to be two steps above. Like, if you were five, your mentor needs to be an eight, seven, you know, eight, seven, or eight. All right, your mentee needs to be, if you're five, a three, or a four. Okay, because so, otherwise, you're going to be too busy, or they're going to bore you, or, you know, like, you ain't got the time to deal with that over your but head. But that's I'm why saying, they got to like, read do the you book. Have a, Right, I'm saying, okay, yeah. so you say start with the book. Yeah, it's online. That book is $20. That book changed my life. Before I read that book, I was doing deal to deal. 
Yeah. Talking to individual people. I read that book, made 10 million, raised 10 million dollars. Like it's in the book. We like black people don't read enough, right? So these things, these concepts are not new. White folks use self-directed IRAs as modalities and vehicles to get things done for their retirement. And, and we walking around with no retirement. Let me bring it down. So like the HSA account, right? Most people don't have basic medical coverage. They got traditional insurance that comes off the marketplace. Right. If you get hurt, God forbid you drive home, you got to pay five racks just to see the doctor. Pretty much. So most people, what do they do? They do the GoFundMe's, right? White folks or astute business people have self-directed HSA accounts. So they, they will put the minimum contribution in there, which is $7,000 annually for a family, $3,500 for an individual. Go buy some real estate, right? Sell it for $7,000. You go buy it at the DeKalb County tax sale, sell it, and the $100,000 goes back into the HSA account tax-free. So now, when you have a medical <laughs> emergency, I'm not calling Jamal talking about, yo, I need to come to the church raise house. Raise some money, right. Talk about I got to raise money to put to deal with a, with a situation because I got to go see the doctor. I'm going to cut a check from the HSA account and get them white folks, they five racks, and they're going to go do what they got to do. And I'm going to keep it moving. That's how business gets done. I got to suggest, brother, like both of y'all, man, let's real quick, I know we got to run. I really want to suggest, man, that y'all have, like... I'm gonna read the book. I'm gonna learn about the HSAs, but I want somebody to walk with me. We here. I've been here ten years. Like we see, on the radio. How, like, how, I, I like, knew how he was gonna you? drag I mean, me for being like yeah. pontificated. Yeah. So I came yeah. with a USA Today eighth grade reading list that I've been waiting to get to. I'm, when, whenever I can get to the list, I'm gonna Ooh. give you. I, I brought a oh, gun. Man, man. Right. Yeah. But the first thing the is, and I want I want to empathize with you because I, I was the first. My wife and I too. We were the first black people in the country to start what's called a co-working space, mm -hmm. called the Opportunity Hub. Right. My campuses are shut down. We're like the black WeWork, if you've heard of WeWork. Yes. Okay? They're shut down. You know, my one in Kansas City, the one we have at Morehouse College, I was just about to open one with the Omegas out here in Decatur. I was trying to, we, we were talking about opening one on the campus. So that business is done. I have had to basically pivot my entire pivot. business in the last 90 days. Wow. And the first thing that I did, I, I came with some plugs. The, I'm going to tell it all the brothers right now. You need to get you a new skill mm. right now. You yeah, need right. to, and, and if you want to learn the code, build programs, build apps. What was featured on the cover of the Atlanta Journal and Constitution is Love a it. new HBCU coding boot camp we started at Morehouse College. We got 30 people in this, this class right now from Brooklyn, New York to Beaumont, Texas. Wow. We got dudes in Beaumont, Texas learning Python. When you graduate with a Python certificate from Morehouse, can you imagine you're gonna get a certificate from Morehouse College without being there for four years, probably five years, right? right the way it really go down. You're gonna get a certificate in 12 weeks on how to build apps. You can either go work for a company or you can go start your own tech company. The plug is called momentum.morehouse.edu. Momentum.morehouse.edu. Right, tell, tell them real quick how they can find you and all that you do. Yeah, so if you if you just come to at Rodney Sampson or come to at OHUB, and the final thing is, I called one of my white boys up, Jay, last week and was like, look, we, I'm, <laughs> I'm on y'all board. I know I own equity in this company that Tim Draper, the grandfather of mm. venture capital started out in California. It's called Draper Going Home. Mm -hmm. It's the first blockchain uh, studio and venture fund. Them boys went and got me a million dollars of Bitcoin. I'm giving out a million dollars of Bitcoin. Y'all zoom in on this. Now. I'm giving out a million dollars. <laughs> this ain't and a here's wide the thing. shot. That I'm giving out a million dollars of Bitcoin. Go to billion dollar wealthchallenge.com, billiondollarwealthchallenge.com. Put your name there. My team's going to send you the link because you need to learn about digital currency. So I'm going to give you your first $100 to 10,000 people. Wow. The second thing I'm going to do is give you a pass to this blockchain conference. Everybody's tripping over crypto. Crypto is the surface. The blockchain technology... The entire internet, Jay, is being rebuilt on blockchain wow. because people do not trust the system. Wow. Okay? So you need to know about all these digital currencies. You need to get a skill. And the second thing you need to do 
is is learn everything you can. This thing, but I don't know no more, right. and you got Google in right. your hand, exactly. that's, that's an yeah. excuse yeah. that Very you good. don't need to have. That's so right. you, I'm going to drop all this stuff on our social media profile so y'all can get the plug. Very good. Dr. Anderson, Very real good. quick. Um, real quick, Dr. David Anderson, a.k.a. Mr. Black Economics, the Entrepreneur Negro. Remember, Black Economics syndicated from 2007 to 2017, Sirius XM, 25 cities nationwide. Uh, fast shouts out to Rashad Richie. You can catch us uh, Wednesday morning on WAOK V103 8 um, AM for the Wealth Wednesdays. We also do the Wealth Wednesday um, seminar series on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, and on um, YouTube. And we had like 10,000 people last Wednesday at 8 PM on Wednesday night. So catch us there. Um, you can call the uh, office, 888-755-5105. I still train. I still teach. School of Entrepreneurship. This is our 10th year of training and teaching. So we've been here. If you don't know about us, just go to YouTube and type in Dr. David M. Anderson Sr. and get acquainted with what we got going on. Black Economics Matters. I love it. Real quick, how can they hear you, KD? Online, mypraiseatl.com, or if you're here locally, 102.5 on Praise FM from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Social media at KD Bow, website kdbow.com, manupcommunity.org. And on Facebook, KD Bow Show. The greatest black barbershop in black America. Well, groomed mail. Come on, brother Troy. All We're right. in your house. So we are here. Come see us. We're at the 3642 Flakes Mill Road, Well Groomed Mail Barbershop. Uh, we're online at wellgroomedmail.com. And um, please come and check us out. If you, if you want to safely or as safely as possible get services, get groomed up, get taken care of, we have great barbers. And if you are a barber and you're looking for a place where you can be taken care of and you have great customers, uh, I'm looking to fill a couple spots. Brother Troy, how much is the average barber haircut here? So it varies. Our, our Give, base, me the our, 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 Give me the <laughs> average one. The, Not the KD one. <laughs> for people with, with so, so, to cut so, so, all of this. So, so, to cut so, all yeah, of this, like, how much is that going to cost? While I'm here, I might as well take the <laughs> risk. Because right, right. <laughs> his wife been boycotting for 14 weeks. <laughs> you, you, you know, the average haircut is actually about $20 yes. plus tip. Uh, you know, your beard. Tim, how much is the beard? Where's Tim, you here? Tim? 25. 25. Tim says 25. Okay. Very good. But, so this is what I wanted to say. New birth is not in Trump's opportunity zone, ah. but it's in God's opportunity <laughs> zone. So I need you to give a seed of $25. A that. whole lot went into your head tonight. I Million dollar opportunities, reservoir of, of books and insight and information. This was too much for you to get all of this. You're going to have to go back and listen to this again. I want you to share it. I want you to pull your sons down, your brother, your husband, make them listen to it and not just listen to it, but I want them to act on it. Ask that all of our men, come on. It was no registration tonight. All of this information uh, is top notch, top shelf information. I want you to sow now if you were blessed, you were benefited. Tomorrow night is Bible study. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. We're closing out our series prospering in a pandemic and I'm believing God's going to do it for you. Have a great night. Brothers, please don't just be hearers of the word, be doers also.